Today, we are looking at one of the big trends in generative AI, the race to build AI that can build better software. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. One of the big pursuits for AI developers right now is building software that can build software. This is important on a number of different levels. As we will discuss, it is not only about building a new type of tool, but also about giving AIs more broad reasoning power. Well, the specific context that we're starting with today is a new nine-figure funding round for Magic. Former GitHub CEO and now AI investor extraordinaire, also the guy behind the Vesuvius challenge that we talked about last week, Nat Friedman tweeted, Magic.dev has trained a groundbreaking model with many millions of tokens of context that performed far better in our evals than anything we've tried before. They're using it to build an advanced AI programmer that can reason over your entire code base and the transitive closure of your dependency tree. If this sounds like Magic, well, you get it. Daniel and I were so impressed, that's Daniel Gross, his often investing partner, we are investing $100 million into the company today. The team is intensely smart and hardworking. Building an AI programmer is both self-evidently valuable and intrinsically self-improving. If this sounds interesting to you, consider joining them. Now, one thing I want to note is this many millions of tokens of context, which is something that we're going to get deeper into in the main part of the episode. But here, obviously, part of the big innovation is that with that big of a context window, as Nat puts it, the AI programmer can reason over the entire code base. The ability to ingest an entire code base all at once obviously seems like it could give Magic a very different set of capabilities. Now, in their announcement post, Magic writes that they're working on frontier scale code models to build a coworker, not just a co pilot. They write things we believe. Code generation is both a product and a path to AGI. AGI safety matters and is solvable. To build a great AI product, we need to train our own frontier scale model. Transformers aren't the final architecture. We have something with a multi-million token context window. So there is a lot in just a few bullets there. Code generation as both product and a path to AGI. We're about to discuss Mark Zuckerberg's comments recently, where Meta has come around to this thinking that code generation is indeed a central capability for the state of the art, not just from a feature parity standpoint, but because it improves general reasoning. The other bombastic note here is this idea that transformers, which is of course what GPT is built on, the T stands for transformer, aren't the final architecture, and that they have a multi-million token context window. Now, given all this, it's not surprising that Magic is very buzzy. However, they're not the only project thinking in similar ways. Anton Osika, who has been building GPT Engineer, which we've covered on the show before, yesterday tweeted, Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Launching a new AI startup out of Europe today. Lovable. We're building software that builds software. How we are approaching it at a high level? Step one, a tool for anyone to prototype web apps and collaborate via natural language on the same code base as developers. Step two, make fully autonomous code generation work on one single set of technology choices. Now, if you go to their website, lovable.dev, the claim they make is that this is the last piece of software. They write, we're building the software that builds other software. Why? The world, they write, is full of ambitious people who want to solve important problems. For three decades, software has been the most significant tool to unleash the world's ambition. Still, less than 1% of the world has the skills required to create software. If we succeed, they write, everyone will have the same capabilities that entire product development teams at stellar tech companies have today, right at their fingertips. We will unlock a new era of innovation, empowering dreamers everywhere to shape the world. We're reducing the barriers to build and staying committed to one goal, to unleash human creativity on an unprecedented scale. Now, about a month ago, Mark Zuckerberg talked a bit about what was coming with Llama 3, and some of these same themes were on display. He discussed how the company had changed its position on coding in AI, saying, One hypothesis was that coding isn't that important because it's not like a lot of people are going to ask coding questions in WhatsApp, which is, of course, a big part of the meta portfolio. Zuckerberg went on, though, it turns out that coding is actually really important structurally for having the LLMs be able to understand the rigor and hierarchical structure of knowledge, and just generally have more of an intuitive sense of logic. You'll remember there were a lot of headlines around this time last month about Zuckerberg's goal to build an open source AGI. Now, the consequence of this shift to focus on coding inside Llama 3 is not just to compete on that open source access, to compete at the state of the art in general. Zuckerberg said, Llama 2 wasn't an industry-leading model, but it was the best open source model. With Llama 3 and beyond, our ambition is to build things that are at the state of the art and eventually the leading models in the industry. Now, of course, there are big debates around what the net impact of this type of self-generating software can do. Holding aside all the arguments about how this is where AI goes off the rails and all the safety risks, which is worthy of an entire episode on its own, even the debate around whether AI is going to replace programmers has a lot of interesting dimensions. Ahmad, the CEO at Mercury, tweeted about this yesterday, writing, Why AI is not going to replace programmers. When I was in college studying computer science in 2005, I was told that outsourcing to India will remove the demand for programmers. It was a real fear. 
AI replacing coders, I think, is based on a similar misconception. He goes on, This misconception is rooted in a misunderstanding of what programmers do that non-programmers and even many engineers have. Programming is sometimes seen as a science where you have a very specific spec and you convert that through a series of repetitive work to code. People perceive it similarly to high school level math. You get an equation and you solve it and get an answer. And to be fair, that is what learning to program and entry level programming is like. So it's easy to see why people have this misconception. In reality, a lot of programming is one, understanding customers, internal or external, two, converting that understanding into potential implementation, three, thinking about integrating seamlessly into existing code, four, thinking about building in a scalable way for future recs, five, etc. A lot of it involves having deep taste and applying that taste against the customer need. This part is much more art than science even. So what he says AI will actually do? One, make programmers more efficient at the repetitive part. Two, enable more people to be programmers. Three, turn more of the world into bespoke software. Four, increase the demand for great programming artists, elevating the craft even more. Ultimately, he concludes, if you're thinking of learning to code, don't be put off by the AI will replace programmers meme and just do it. Another take on this that we've often heard from Sam Altman is that AI won't replace programmers because the demand for things that programmers build is just going to go up consequently with our capacity to actually deliver against that demand. Anyways, it's a super interesting discussion and honestly could have been a full episode rather than just a brief. But before we get to the main part of this episode, let's actually cover a few additional stories. Slack becomes the latest Web 2.0 software to deeply integrate AI, announcing that Slack AI has arrived. There are a bunch of different parts of this. Personalized search results, channel recaps and thread summaries. So for example, if you've been gone for a while, Slack AI can summarize what you've missed, which for anyone working with me on Slack would be a very useful thing given how many messages I send. And of course, Slack and its owner Salesforce are promising that users will control their data, that they'll have more granular ability to implement tools, etc., etc. Interesting news out of Amazon. Researchers at Amazon have apparently trained the largest ever text-to-speech model, which of course matters given that the company is so invested in things like Alexa, and they claim that they're seeing what they call emergent qualities, which is improving that model's ability to speak naturally, even in the context of complex sentences. The new model is called Big Adaptive Steamable TTS with Emergent Abilities, or Base TTS. TechCrunch writes at 980 million parameters, Base Large appears to be the biggest model in this category. The largest version was trained on 100,000 hours of public domain speech, 90% of which was in English with the remainder in German, Dutch, and Spanish. Areas where this large model improved from previous models, they said, include compound nouns, emotions, foreign words, paralinguistics, aka readable non-words like sh, punctuation, questions, and syntactic complexities. The authors of a paper wrote, These sentences are designed to contain challenging tasks parsing garden path sentences, placing phrasal stress on long-winded compound nouns, producing emotional or whispered speech, or producing the correct phonemes for foreign words like chi or punctuations like at, none of which base TTS is explicitly trained to perform. TechCrunch writes, Such features normally trip up text-to-speech engines, which will mispronounce, skip words, use odd intonation, or make some other blunder, but while base TTS still had some trouble, it apparently did far better than its contemporaries. So once again, we have an advanced model that is working in ways we just don't quite understand. Over on Wall Street, a number of companies saw their stock rise after NVIDIA disclosed that it was an investor. Those investments included Recursion Pharmaceuticals, Conversational Voice Assistant Developer SoundHound AI, and fellow AI chip designer ARM. So friends, AI's White Hawk Street continues, but for us, that will end the AI Breakdown Brief. Thanks for listening or watching as always, and up next, the main AI Breakdown.